Hello, and welcome to a lecture on the reflection coefficient for embedded two ports. My name is Steve Ellingson. In this lecture, we're talking about the embedded properties of two ports. And those are the properties which apply when the input and output of the two port are terminated by impedances which are not necessarily equal to the reference impedance. Reference impedance being uh, Z naught. And uh, this is often the case when we have the two port in practical situations, that is when it's embedded in a larger circuit. So here's what we want to talk about. First, the load reflection coefficient, gamma sub L. I'll say this now and I'll probably repeat it a few times. This is a property, this is just another way of talking about Z sub L, the load impedance. It really doesn't have anything to do with the two port. Then we actually get to the embedded input reflection coefficient, and this is gamma in, and this will depend on the load impedance as well as the S parameters of the two port. Then I'll show you an example. Then the source reflection coefficient and the embedded output reflection coefficient, gamma S and gamma out respectively, we'll see that these are just uh, symmetrical concepts relative to the input quantities. All right, the load reflection coefficient. So in this diagram, I'm showing this transmission line, which is connecting us to the output of the two port. And uh, we have a terminating impedance, Z sub L, may or may not be equal to the characteristic impedance. However, we define the load reflection coefficient in the usual way. And I say usual way because presumably you've had an earlier class in which you learned about reflection coefficients. And uh, here we're defining it as reflection coefficient, the voltage reflection coefficient uh, for the uh, load impedance relative to the characteristic impedance. Now note that this load reflection coefficient depends only on the load impedance. The characteristic impedance is just something we use to define S parameters. And even if we change the characteristic impedance of this transmission line in a practical problem, we'll still call the load impedance this thing. So it's just another way of talking about the load uh, impedance. So the number one uh, point of confusion that uh, people often have at this point in the course is forgetting this idea. Uh, so for example, you run into a problem where the uh, characteristic impedance of the transmission line is something other than the reference impedance, and then you decide that this should be Z sub C, and that's wrong. Uh, it'd be right if I asked you what that actual reflection coefficient was, but in this concept, what we're doing is defining the reflection coefficient to be with respect to the reference impedance, so Z naught. Now, having done this, we can also relate this to the power waves on the transmission line. So since this is the output of the two port, we have an inbound, that is with respect to the two port power wave A2, uh, the outbound power wave uh, B2, and uh, then we see that um, we can also compute this load reflection coefficient as a ratio of A2 to B2. So these are uh, equivalent uh, values. Okay, now we're ready to do the input ref uh, reflection coefficient uh, at the uh, input of the two port. And we're calling this gamma in. And again, we can write down the uh, power waves here, A1 flowing into the input of the two port, B1 flowing out of the input of the two port. So that reflection coefficient should be equal to the ratio B1 over A1. Now we can start using S parameter concepts. B1, by definition, is S11 A sub 1 plus S12 uh, A2. That's just a defining relationship. And of course, A1 is just A1. So with just a little bit of math here, I see that the input reflection coefficient th at this point here is given by S11 plus S12 times the ratio A2 over A1. Now, that's not entirely satisfactory because I've got this input reflection coefficient and sure, it's in terms of these two S parameters, but I don't know what these are in general yet. And really what I'd like to do is to have this in terms of S parameters and the terminating impedance. That's what I'm really looking for. So here's how I'm going to go about doing this. 
First, I note that A2 over A1 can be written as gamma sub L B2 over A1. In other words, gamma sub L is the ratio of A2 over B2. So I'm just taking advantage of that relationship, which I showed you on a previous slide. I can make that substitution for B2 based on the definition of S parameters. So I get this expression. Right? And now I've got A2 over A1 over here. And I'll also end up with an A2 over A1 over here. Now, so I can solve now this, uh, this equation for A2 over A1. And the result I get is that A2 over A1 equals gamma sub L S21 over 1 minus gamma sub L S22. Now that's the thing I want to appear there. So when the smoke clears, I find that the input embedded reflection coefficient is S11 plus this rather complicated looking fraction, but which contains nothing but S parameters and the load reflection coefficient. S12, S21, gamma sub L1, S22, gamma sub L. So this is a very convenient expression because now I know this input reflection coefficient entirely in terms of the S parameters of the two port and the terminating impedance Z sub L. And we'll make use of this expression quite a bit. So it's to your advantage to kind of understand where this comes from and how to use it. I'll point out one other thing here. You could kind of anticipate that the solution should have looked like this or should look like this because uh, if um, there's no reflection from the load, then gamma sub L would be zero and this whole term would be zero, leaving just S11, which is exactly what you'd expect to see. S11, the voltage reflection coefficient from the input. So another way of saying that is that the input reflection coefficient is equal to S11, the voltage reflection coefficient, when the output is matched, plus this thing which describes the effect of any mismatch at the output. So it's a very convenient and useful way of thinking about this. Okay, so here's an example. I have a transmission line whose characteristic impedance is the reference impedance. I've terminated it into a impedance Z sub L. And the two port itself consists simply of the series impedance, uh, which in this case is equal to Z naught. Okay. The S parameters of this particular uh, setup, we've already worked out. Uh, S11 is one third, S21 is two thirds, S12 is uh, two thirds, and uh, S22 is one third. So now, as I change the value of Z sub L, I should be able to compute the embedded reflection coefficients uh, as well as the load reflection coefficient. So let's do that. For example, when Z sub L is a short circuit, that's what it means for the impedance to be zero, what is the load reflection coefficient? What is the embedded input reflection coefficient? If I open circuit it, what is the load reflection coefficient and the input embedded reflection coefficient? And then finally, if I matched at the output relative to the reference impedance, what are those two things? So you are now able to compute those numbers I'll give you a moment to do that. You should pause the video here and then restart when you're uh, ready to see the answers. Okay, here we go. Here are the answers. When we have a short circuit at the output, the load reflection coefficient is minus one. You knew this from an earlier course in electromagnetics. A short circuit has a reflection coefficient of minus one. And since this depends entirely on the load impedance and nothing else, then you know right away this is minus one. Also, you can use the formulas and you'll find that the embedded input reflection coefficient, that is that one here, is zero. When the load impedance is an open circuit, then for the same reason, we find that the load reflection coefficient is plus one, change of sign, and we can use the equation and find that the input embedded reflection coefficient is plus one. And then finally, when ZL uh, equals Z naught, in other words, when we're matched at the output relative to the reference impedance, well, the load reflection coefficient is zero, no surprise there, and the input embedded reflection coefficient is one third, and you can calculate this using the equation.
But just to say this one more time, all these numbers are just different ways of talking about the load impedance. They only depend on the load impedance. These depend on both the load impedance and the S parameters of the two port. And that's the uh, operative concept. Okay, now we can do the embedded output reflection coefficient. All the ideas remain the same. Instead of the load, uh, the output of the two port being terminated, the input of the two ports terminated, it's terminated into impedance Z sub S, may or may not be equal to the reference impedance. At the output, we observe a reflection coefficient, gamma sub out, and then we have these power waves defined the usual way as on a transmission line having a characteristic impedance equal to the reference impedance. And using the exact same procedure, we come up with a very similar looking expression. I'm not even going to bother to work it out here. You can easily do this, and you should. It'll uh, underscore or reinforce the, uh, the concept. But what we find is that the embedded output uh, reflection coefficient is, no surprise, the uh, S22, the output uh, reflection coefficient when everything's matched uh, to the reference impedance, plus some modification here, which accounts for the fact that this may not be the reference impedance. So intrinsic reflection coefficient plus some modification that accounts for the mismatch. And Note well here, gamma sub s is just another way of talking about the source impedance, right? So it's z sub s minus the reference impedance over z sub s plus the uh, reference impedance. So very simple, and everything is completely symmetrical with the input case. That concludes uh, this lecture on the reflection coefficient for embedded two ports.